Click, click, click. Hello everyone and welcome to BHT Studios. As I promised in early videos, I thought I would make a video of an article that I've already written on Fuji Love magazine because I know some of you had mentioned that you don't mind the articles but you'd also enjoy seeing a video. So one of the articles that I thought I would make a video of is my night photography project that I started around March when everything kind of locked down because of the pandemic and you know restaurants are shut down, hair salons, like you pretty much couldn't do anything out there and I decided that I still wanted to go out and take pictures but also uh, be respectful of social distancing and quarantining and things like that so I started photographing from inside my car and through the windshield, so I didn't even roll the window, I mean I did roll the window down for some things, but I thought I would narrow the project down to just photographing through my windshield and pretty much when it's raining or at least when it's wet outside. And as you saw in the intro videos, because of the, the wet rain on my windshield, it created this weird kind of a filtered, sort of flary, weird blurry kind of a look that looks kind of surreal. And uh, one of the, the inspirations of that idea was from another project I did and another article I did for Fujilove, which was photographing from inside a bus using one lens, one camera body, one film simulation, and just focusing on the public transport system. And I'll probably shoot another video on that, even though you can go and uh, read the article as well. So, but for this specifically was because of the pandemic, I thought I would make a, a fun project for myself that will be super narrow, and then it'll force me to not just finish the project overnight. So I've pretty much gone out maybe four times, three or four times when it's raining, and specifically to look for images for this project. And as you saw in the intro sequence, all different cameras that I used, I started off with the GFX 50S with the 45 to 100, and those were the four by three aspect ratio images. And I had the X-H1 with the anamorphic, the Suri anamorphic lens. So that's the one where you see almost like a two by one. I didn't crop it, it was actually a two by three image that was squeezed and then a de-squeezed uh, in post and then I'll do a, another video on this lens again I've written an article on Fujilove I got a lot of articles to catch up on because I write two articles a month but going back to this project so between the X-T4 and the X-H1 is the majority of the images because having IBIS does help although one trick that I found was um, when I'm photographing from the driver's side I am parked safely with the e-brake up and in park and sometimes the engine is still running so um, I could stay warm but it's best to turn it off so you don't get a little bit of that rumbling because of the engine and I just rest my camera or the lens on top of the, the steering wheel and with the engine off with the power on if it's raining a lot what I would do is uh, time how much rain is coming down and then the wipers are going so I'm shooting so some of the images I've ruined because it's the wipers are coming up and it kind of it finds its way in the image so just timing it just right not having too much rain not having too little and experimenting with that and eventually I got a groove into you know when when is that decisive moment because sometimes I am waiting for a car to drive past figure out what shutter speed I should be at and then making sure the balance is right as well as knowing what aperture to shoot at. So when you're shooting at a, a smaller aperture, so a larger number, the, the window which I'm using as a filter becomes more prominent, right? Where if I'm shooting at a wider aperture or a lower number, it blurs it out more but then the light flares become more globby versus stopping down it makes the flares have that little star point and it looks it looks cooler so I'm also kind of playing and balancing with aperture and shutter speed as well as the exposure and so this project isn't over I probably will continue doing this because I'm not 100% happy with the images that I've got I think I could do better and overall, I think I've settled in on using this Surui anamorphic lens, the, the 50 f1.8. Uh, unfortunately, Surui 
they said that the, their new 35 mil anamorphic, they can't make it in the Fujifilm mount. I don't much sure if they mean they can or they won't. We'll find out. And if not, then I might have to use a Sony body or Canon body and attach it on to that and then test it with the 35. But I do like the anamorphic look. It looks cinematic, shooting at night through a window with rain. It just looks cinematic. And the medium format, although I love the resolution, I don't like the four by three aspect ratio, especially for YouTube, right? You get the big black bars on the side. And so I think this is probably the lens I'm gonna use. But as well, I did use various lenses. I did use the 50 millimeter F1, which is a lot of fun because I do have a, a large variety of apertures to test. So I've, I've used this as well as the, the 10 to 24. One of the earlier shots you could see when you could see the inside of my car, that was with the 10 to 24, I think even at 10. And probably a good lens, uh, overall lens to use is something like a 16 to 80, unless you have multiple bodies. And that's kind of what I did. I had the anamorphic lens on one body and then whatever le other lens I had on another body. So I'm switching between the two bodies. And I'll even put one of the cameras or two, both cameras, because I have two cup holders, lens down so I can quickly grab even when I'm stopped at an intersection light, which I don't know, is that illegal to grab? Maybe it is. Uh, don't do what I do. But, um, so I can just quickly grab the camera. But if you only have one body and you only want one lens, uh, you can sort of, again, create a limit for yourself and you'd have to go out multiple times or bring multiple lenses and see which lens works for the style that you're looking for or get a lens like the 16 to 80 and you have a really wide, uh, focal length variety of choices as well as cropping, right? So if you don't have an anamorphic lens, you can still crop to two to one if you like, or 16 by nine, which I prefer, or just shoot at the native uh, three by two aspect ratio on the APS-C system. So I'm gonna keep on developing it. Um, if you have any questions of of how I shot, how I post-processed, uh, just kind of uh, ask questions on below, but I would recommend for you to go check out my article on Fuji Love that I, I think I posted back in March, but I'll have the links below, and I'll probably will do a part two update on how this project is coming along, and uh, I'll create more videos based on articles that I've written on Fuji Love. And that's about it. And so any more questions, please let me know down below. Uh, don't forget to like, don't forget to tell your friends about the channel so I can keep on creating content like this just for you. So thanks for watching and happy shooting.